I want to do a little bit different interview with you, and it's going to focus more on your vocals. Sure, whatever you want. So the first question is that what actually got you into metal music at first place? Oh, what actually got me into metal music? So probably let's backtrack to 1992, most likely, or 1993, uh, first or second year of high school. You're young, you're wondering what your place is here on this planet. And I don't know, I didn't really have any activities back then. And then I started meeting people in high school and there were you know, playing guitar and they were showing me these bands like uh, these records like uh, Megadeth, Rust in Peace or uh, Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. I believe Vulgar Display of Power had just came come out. Uh, Sepultura Chaos AD was brand new. So I started being really interested in metal music somehow uh, with those interactions. And I thought music looked like a fun activity so all my friends were playing guitar or bass so i figured hey playing the band could be fun they're all playing guitar maybe i could play drums so second year of high school i started playing drums and being like completely absorbed into music in general but also metal uh, uh more specifically and i don't know for as far as i can remember as, as soon as I discovered music and metal, uh, everything else just became like background noise. I was in class or on the bus on my way to school or anything and or at home. And all I could think of was like, hey, recording a demo cassette with a new band could be awesome or playing a show in Montreal would be amazing. And so that became my main motivation behind becoming a musician and just being really passionate about metal in general. So how did the transition go from being a drummer to being a vocalist? And was oh this Vice Icon like your first band? No, not at all, actually. So talking about high school, so we're talking about uh, beginning to, we're talking, you know, mid-90s, more or less. And so... Um, started playing drums then and then started being playing in various bands here and there and then I joined a brutal death metal band called Hidden Pride when I was uh, 17 and they were all like five or ten years older than I was and already playing shows I had stepped in in a pre-existing band that already had a demo and a, and a record and were already playing shows so that to me was uh, exposed me to what it's like to play shows outside of the city and record and whatnot. And then um, I played in that band for a year and then joined a band called Naraxis that had some kind of success. So 18 years old, I was playing drums in Naraxis, uh, recorded my first record ever uh, that came out in 2001, which was called A Passage into Forlorn, and then recorded another record in 2002 called Truth Beyond, who both were later re-released re -released through a uh, Willow Tip in America and Earache in Europe. And that was my first experience as far as like actual touring was concerned. So first US tour was in 2001 with Naraxis and Cephalic Carnage. And then fast forward two years, 2003, I'm touring Europe for the first time with Naraxis playing drums. And then one thing led to another. I was already, uh, you know, I was always stepping into these bands that were pre-existing prior to me being in the band. And then I was like, I would love to, you know, build a band of my own with, you know, my own creativity and ideas, whether it's, you know, the music, you know, sonically or also visually, the art direction. And so that's how I, I started Despised Icon with Eric, a close friend of mine at the time, still is one of my best friends, my brother. And uh, yeah, uh, one thing led to another and then 2004 I had tendonitis and I had been playing drums for a little over 10 years already and then I had to take a break from drums but I really wanted to you know pursue this music thing so at the time the spies we always had two vocalists and Mary who was our vocalist back then uh, ended up quitting the band and so I was like fuck it I just want to play music so I, that's how I switched from drums to vocals in 2004 and then Back then, you know, we just I, I, I spoke of my early influences, Pantera, Sepultura, all of that. But then, you know, the older you get, the heavier you want 
the heavier you want it to be, right? So then you discover Dying Fetus and Suffocation and di- Devourment and all these bands that we always name drop. And, you know, also the hardcore side of things, Madball, Biohazard, you know, uh, Hatebreed, the earlier stuff. So uh, I figured let's let's transition to vocals. I just want to play music. And, uh, but, you know, now that I'm behind the mic, I'm just going to find the sickest drummer ever. And I knew this kid in the Montreal scene called Alex Grime. And I was like, this motherfucker is so fast. This is the guy that we need in this band to get us to the next level. And then one thing led to another and he joined our band. And then we had this energy, you know, it was all so new and, and, and motivating. So that's when we recorded two demo tracks uh, in 2004, put them out on MySpace, sent them out to labels through sm- snail mail, you know, burning CDRs, hand assembling, um, uh, you know, promo sleeves. And those recordings are now on Deterré, which comes out tomorrow uh, on Nuclear Blast. You know, those are the earlier demo recordings uh, that got us to where we are now, you know, as far as getting our first U.S. tours and getting, you know, our music outside of Montreal and Canada in general. So I, I lost track of what the actual question was, but uh, I feel like I've been talking a lot. So how about you say something for a change? <laughs> <laughs> so you have, you have explained pretty well now the transition to being a vocalist. But when you mm. started doing the vocals, how long did it sort of take you to figure out the right technique to start doing the screaming and growling? And were you like immediately doing your own songs or were there like some certain covers that you tried to cover in a way where you're trying to sort of figure out your own way to do things? No, I went into it right away. And like those uh, songs that are coming out on Deterré uh, tomorrow, those demo tracks were me like screaming only after a few months. Okay. I had, for, whether it's drums or vocals, part of it is technique, but most of it is just passion and just needing that outlet to get rid of all that negative energy and transform it into something that's more positive or constructive. So I've always just been, you know, playing drums. Part of it was just, you know, the wrists, the fingers, and then holy shit, I'm losing my rebound. I don't care. I want to go fast. And then you switch to the arms, you know, which isn't good, which you should not do, (laughs) but that's passion. And same thing applies to vocals. You know, the first couple of songs you'd scream, oh, this feels easy. And then at the end, you're like, I can't hear myself. It's not coming out. I don't care. I'm just going to scream as loud as I can. And that's, that's that's been my approach to music. And I would not recommend that for vocals as well. My first U.S. tours, I was constantly losing my voice. But at some point, you know, you figure a way out of it and you, you're you more in tune with your body and your capabilities. And uh, but, yeah, I just really wanted to play music. So at, at any cost. So how long did it actually take to figure out the right technique for the screaming and growling? <laughs> I feel like I'm still not... I feel like I haven't even, uh, I'm in constant learning, whether it's music or anything else in life. You know, it's important to keep that curiosity going and it's important to, uh, I don't know. I want to keep evolving as a human being, but also as a musician. So I'm still perfecting my voice. Uh, but were I know there my like limits. Some, sorry to interrupt, but were there like some certain times that you were like losing your voice after each show that you were sort of like forcing too much and you didn't know what to do and what what's your sort of like own limit for it absolutely those those first uh those first u.s tours in 2005 2006 uh that was me screaming every night for the you know for consecutive months you know these these north american tours you'd be on the road for like five or six seconds five or six weeks at a time yeah and so at some point I would just lose it. But uh, um, when we recorded our third record, The Ills of Modern Man, I had a lot of um, issues with my voice in the studio because all of a sudden just screaming as loud as you can wasn't wasn't cutting it, you know? My voice kept breaking. And But uh, the older you get, the the more you understand, you know, your body's limits and how things work and how to properly push. 
and how to not overdo it. And then technology comes into hand, you know, uh, in your monitors, that's been quite helpful in comparison to just having shitty monitors in front of you on stage that, you know, don't, don't put as much out so that you're always constantly overcompensating and screaming too loud. You know, the older I get, the more, uh, the better understanding I have of it all. But I feel like I haven't quite, uh, mastered it yet still after all this time and that's the beauty of it i think it's awesome that my technique isn't perfect because there's more emotion somehow that that's conveyed through my voice uh, i i think it's so amazing to see like uh you know the 20 year olds nowadays with like the perfect drumming technique and the perfect screaming technique and it's all just it seems effortless and like they hardly hit you know it's all based on rebound and technique and the the vocals is some of it sounds like almost like a whisper or like a talking voice like like right now and that's amazing and like i i admire like all that control and technique that they have but i like the fact that i'm imperfect it's it's just more raw you know and uh here I am leaving for tour today and playing 22 shows in a row. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so do you feel that the first U.S. tour was like the biggest learning experience for you when it comes to the vocals that you learned like the most about yourself and what's, what's like okay to do on the road and what's not? Not just vocals, but life in general. Touring yeah. is, is a hell of an experience. I feel very, fortunate to be given that opportunity you know 20 years in as i said my first u.s tour was 2001 you know here we are in 2022 so it's, it's been a while um, um i am the person that i am through these uh life experiences you know traveling across the world meeting different cultures uh, uh, but also facing a harsh reality that nothing's going to get handed out to you. You know, I do speak about, you know, feeling lucky, but I've worked quite hard for it and put in a lot of time and effort and so many sacrifices. And uh, all that is uh, part of the learning process. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way, the good and the bad. But uh, again, vocally speaking, I'm stepping into the, to this tour with a better understanding of what I need to do and not do in order to, you know, maintain a proper screaming voice. So has there been some album like in Despite the Icons, discography, where you have sort of learned the most about vocals yourself? Uh, yeah. Um, so I would say it's our latest record, Purgatory, that came out in 2019. So that recording um and also i was in another another band called obey the brave on epitaph yeah. records which was more like a melodic uh, hardcore or metalcore and just being constantly in the studio recording writing touring with one band or another obviously you get better at it yeah um um I think an eye opener for me was recording Balance, the last Obey the Brave record. Uh, I hired a producer to, you know, like with Naraxis, I did two records uh, with Despised. I'm working on my seventh record right now with Obey the Brave. I did four. So that's a lot of recordings. And at some point you're like, am I reusing the same formula over and over again. So with Obey the Brave, I hired a producer to sort of like help me think outside of the box. And it's uh, Paul Mark from Silverstein. Completely different background type of music approach than I was used to. Uh, but he identified certain things in my songwriting and my vocal performance that were just, that could be optimized or that could be improved And I tried to step into that recording process of balance with an open mind. And it was very, uh, it shattered my reality because, uh, you know, it required a lot of uh, effort and adjustments. But ultimately, I'm very thankful for that and for his teachings because right after balance, I stepped into the studio a few months later, actually, uh, with Despised Icon to do purgatory our latest record both came out like within a six month span and i applied you know 
these songwriting techniques from someone that's more uh his background is more in like rock punk rock metalcore and all that but applied le- that to a death metal background and it was very refreshing and it's uh something that i'm very thankful uh for you know few key elements at some point i was like i'm writing songs so everything has to rhyme but at some point i was just rhyming so much that it i sort of sacrificed the actual meaning of the song for the purpose of having words rhyme with one another so now I, now when i write i try to let go a bit more of that so that it seems more sincere and that i'm really painting a picture without compromising on the words that i should be using to paint that proper picture so that's an example and also just switching up vocal patterns trying to trying to reinvent myself but not lose sight of you know the artist that i am so i'm i've been working really hard writing this new despised icon record uh, i'm very excited to put out new music next year and this is the most thought i've ever put into a recording or album project just because before i was constantly on tour 6 months out of the year and trying to write on tour in between and then you have all these deadlines from all right record needs to be done by this date for this release date to match this tour and that tour right after and now it's like with the pandemic and a little prior to that i decided i wasn't going to be a touring musician anymore and just become more of a vacation band and do like i don't know a month's worth of shows a year and because of that i have a stable life at home now and a career for the first time which is awesome and and i feel like i've grown a lot as an individual so writing wise that's going to help me out uh with you know all that experience that i've had but also just me being able to take my time and not giving a fuck about deadlines and so on and so forth so that every song is uh the best that it can be uh looking back on previous records i'm like I could have done this instead of that on this song or you know what this song kind of sucks maybe we shouldn't have put it out my focus but right I, now I guess on... it's like always like that when you are when you are in that sort of like circle with the music industry that that mm. it's most of the, if, if 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 you are like metallica you can take all the time you want in the world to write the novel True. but but if you True. are not and you have to pay the bills you are like most of the bands are in that circle to do things of in course. a few years period sort of of course and professionally i've lived that reality for over 15 years but yeah. now that now that i uh i i just turned 42 and everything all of my goals that i had set out as a musician and all the experiences that i wanted to live you know i've done it everything i'm living right now is just bonus and so i i am satisfied if something were to happen I, i'd be happy with everything i've achieved and that'd be that but uh right now it's the beauty of it is you said pay the bills my income doesn't depend on this band it's more lucrative than ever but that's not why we do it and we do it so rarely that it's not enough uh you know for a yearly income so money is not the motivation here uh it's just i'm not myself without it i'm not myself without this band or this music or the scene so that's why you know here i'm 42 and still doing this and having this discussion with you and going back on tour tomorrow and it's very exciting it's it's who i am it's what i need to be doing speaking about being on tour are there like some certain kind of foods or drinks that you wouldn't rather have before you head up on stage that you feel that e- either affects your vocal cords or you just don't want to have them um uh try to avoid uh coffee right before your set that dries up your throat uh i've never been much of a drinker so alcohol for me i don't really care uh even though i'm a manager in a microbrewery one of the best in canada i love our product but i've never been inclined to drinking um i try to just uh eat healthy on tour drink water i don't really have a formula for the first time recently just because you know i haven't toured in three years and i haven't screamed much in the last year i um i got this tea that's called throat coat okay and it sort of helps a little so warm beverages are good but i don't really go out of my way to do any type of uh 
routine or ritual. I try to hum a bit before our set, like maybe five minutes or so. That's your uh, like warm up routine for the show normally. Yeah, just warm up, like just hum a little bit for like five or ten minutes. Okay. Uh, I took a vocal class with someone called David Benitez, who is like a social media uh, influencer for like metal and and vocal vocalists, and took one class. And I've just been so busy, I didn't have a chance to follow up. And we did mostly just talking. But yet, at the end of the class, he gave me, he told me one thing that really stood out. And I've been applying that and it's been night and day with my control of my voice. So I'm very much looking forward to applying that on this next tour and not just uh, overexhausting myself. So, but yeah, don't have many rituals. What I like to do sometimes, sometimes my favorite fruit is uh, I love bananas and they sort of like coat your throat or thick. And so that or, or peanut butter, that sometimes if you're feeling like you have a dry throat for me it works but uh yeah <laughs> so any advices that you would like to give to a young vo- like metal vocalist who is just about to start their journey do you have any good advice to give whatever you do do it for the right reasons don't do it uh to be for any type of popularity or clout or anything just do it because you love it uh You're gonna get tested day in, day out. Your patience, uh, your determination, all that is gonna be continually, continuously tested. Uh, you know, within this scene, with just as a musician in general. You know, less than one percent of us actually make it. You know, and here I am having an interview with someone in Finland, but I'm still not in mainstream metal. I'm still just underground metal, uh, and, and that's cool too. You know, just be, uh, just be passionate. Uh, Uh, be patient and just do what you set out to do. And if you're doing it for the right reasons and you're sincere about it, um, I think you'll you'll make it, you know. And if you suck at first, that's fine. And if you write shitty songs at first, that's fine. We learn through, you know, our trials and errors. And the more you fuck up, the better you get at it. You know, obviously we don't want to fuck up. Obviously we don't want to write shitty songs. So the more you scream, the more you play drums, the more you write songs, the better you get at it. So if you suck at first, don't let it discourage you. You don't gain anything with minimal effort. You got to put in that work to get somewhere, whether it's music or anything, uh, anything in life in general, whether it's you doing these interviews and, and or, or, or someone, you know, fixing roofs or I don't know the the examples are endless if you want to be a basketball player practice if you want to be a musician practice it is what it is <laughs> hey thanks a lot Alex for the time and, and all the best for the release and as well as for the tour that starts tomorrow like you said anything you want to say as a closer to all the fans watching this afterwards uh much love Thanks for tuning in and keep an eye out and an ear out for new music, uh, new despised icon music next year. Hopefully make it to Finland. Who knows? Looking forward to that, man. Thanks a lot for the chat. It was a pleasure. Cheers, brother. My pleasure. Have a good Take tour. Care. Take care. Th- Bye. Thank you very much. Bye now.